So I know this is a little different than my usual videos, but I never really intended for this channel to become so Mordhau specific in the first place. It just sort of happened that way. I had always planned to explore other games on this channel as well, but got pretty wrapped up with managing the Bard's Guild and building an absolutely massive MIDI library. I'll still be making more videos about that in the future as well, as I have a web application to access the MIDI library in the works now. But today let's open this Phyrexia All Will Be One Complete Edition Bundle Box while we talk about Magic the Gathering, why I don't support my local game store, and why I just buy my cards off of Amazon instead. This Phyrexia bundle is actually a great example of why I pre-order new cards from Amazon instead of supporting my local game store or even supporting other online game retailers. I pre-ordered this bundle on Amazon for $80 and the box even arrived early. Meanwhile, there are tons of stories about all of these game retailers unable to fulfill on all the pre-orders they took for this complete edition bundle. And you can find this same bundle being flipped online for as much as $140, if you can even find it at all. I simply won't support a game store that takes a bunch of pre-orders for a product before they have even actually secured that product. It might seem like a good idea to a business owner to base the amount of product they order on the amount of interest generated by pre-sales, but a game store owner should also be familiar enough with their suppliers to know this is a terrible idea with Wizards of the Coast, seeing as they are notorious for artificially limiting supply of popular products to drive up the value of their cards on the secondary market. The only reason for a game store to follow this sort of pre-order practice, knowing Wizards of the Coast may not even fulfill the number of pre-ordered product they require, is because these stores also know this shortage will drive up the value of the product. They can just cancel the pre-sales and sell whatever quantity of product they do receive at a marked up price and make more money, just like we are seeing happen right now with this complete edition bundle. I'm not saying all local game stores are run this way. Maybe you have a reputable seller in your area that doesn't abuse pre-orders in this way. And they probably sold out immediately, so you still couldn't get your hands on one. Many local game stores, though, are well aware that they are the only option in town and feel they can run pre-order scams like this with impunity. It's even easier for online game store retailers to do this when they don't even have to worry about you coming into the store to yell at them in person about it. I'm also in no way saying that you're safe just ordering magic cards off of Amazon either. I pre-ordered a Phyrexia All Will Be One set booster box on Amazon at the same time I pre-ordered the bundle we're opening now. And at the time I recorded this video, I still hadn't received the booster box, even though this bundle here wasn't even released until some time after the set boosters. That's because while this bundle was fulfilled directly by Amazon, the booster box order was fulfilled, or rather not fulfilled, by a third party seller. Make sure you always check the one-star reviews for Amazon sellers, even if it looks like they have a very high rating with a lot of five-star reviews. I won't call out the seller by name in this video, but scrolling through their one-star reviews while waiting for my cards to arrive or for any sort of response at all from the seller regarding my order status inquiry, it became incredibly obvious that there are many, many similar complaints. A product was pre-ordered from the seller, a shipping label was printed immediately, and then the product was just never shipped out. Sellers like this are able to bury most of these negative reviews though. You'll see how most of the one-star reviews are scratched out with a message saying that Amazon fulfillment takes responsibility for delivery problems. So even though they have a ton of one-star reviews from customers saying that they never even received the product they ordered, these negative reviews don't actually end up impacting their seller rating because of this. I'm certain this isn't the only seller abusing this loophole in the seller review policy on Amazon to mask their own shady pre-order practices. They're just the ones I have to deal with right now. There was a happy ending to my story in this particular case at least. 
As soon as Amazon allowed, I canceled that order, got a refund from Amazon, and repurchased my set booster box directly through Amazon Fulfillment instead. I then left a strongly worded negative review for the seller, calling them out for their shady pre-order practices and for burying negative reviews for orders they never shipped. The seller contacted me within hours, lying to me about how there was a mix-up at the post office and they had totally already shipped my order. But don't worry, they sorted it out and I should be receiving my card soon. The cards did in fact arrive a few days later, shipped priority mail because they totally didn't fulfill my order until immediately after I posted my negative review, and unfortunately for them, also hours after Amazon had already granted my full refund for the order. So I ended up with two Phyrexia All Will Be One set booster boxes for the price of one that week. Not bad. Whenever I order cards off Amazon, I now always look for items that are both sold and shipped directly by Amazon. The benefit here is actually that Amazon is a massive corporation and not specifically a game store retailer. They have so many other products and make so much money, they don't really care if the speculative price for some particular box of cards has increased since they began taking pre-orders. This bundle remained at $80 on Amazon until Amazon sold out of their stock, and now that same bundle is being flipped by scalpers for a gross markup. In fact, Amazon knows and cares so little about the specific details regarding magic cards that at one point they even accidentally listed this complete edition bundle at the same price as the regular bundle because whoever was entering the stock into their system at the time didn't even know the difference. So some lucky winners even got this complete edition for basically half off through Amazon. Now, buying cards on Amazon is all fine and good for some hermit like me without any friends who mostly just likes to collect the cards to look at them and sort them into a database. But choking off the local game stores where most people go to actually play Magic the Gathering is quite obviously a mistake for the longevity of the game itself. But corporate executives are astonishingly short-sighted in their unrelenting and unrealistic quest for eternal quarterly profits. WotC is known for keeping a percentage of all cards printed from every set hidden away in a warehouse somewhere and have even been seen dumping entire pallets of products straight into the dump in order to influence the value of their cards on the secondary market by forcibly reducing the supply. That puts local game stores in a position where maybe they can't afford to pre-order enough product, or can't even get enough of a popular product sent to them at all, and forces them into a position where they may have no choice but to resort to questionable pre-order practices or scalping their own limited supply just to keep their doors open. So I know some of you will think I'm a terrible person for not supporting my local game store and buying all my cards through Amazon like this. Don't get me wrong, it's great that we have local game stores to host events like Friday Night Magic where players can come together and find some opponents to play with. I'd just like to point out that you don't actually need a local game store to do this, though. There's always been this really cool free public place where you can go to find a quiet table and play some magic with your friends. It's called your local library. Hmm? Oh, uh, a library is this place where people used to go to borrow books. What? Okay, uh, books are these collections of paper with words printed on them that you can read without needing electrical power or the internet. Anyways, you don't need a game store to host a weekly magic event for you. You can host your own at the library instead. Hell, my local game store already just hosts their Friday night magic events at the library. Put up some flyers around town, create a Facebook group, make a TikTok dance with your magic cards, or however the kids communicate these days, and just go to the library every week at the same time. You might not get a lot of players at first, but if you stick with it consistently, people will start to notice that little group of players in the corner of the library every week and get curious, and your numbers will start to grow.
Granted, not being an officially sanctioned gathering of Magic players means you don't get any cool new promo cards or trinkets like your local game store might be able to provide, but that doesn't mean you can't come up with your own contests and prizes to run your own unofficial Magic events either. It's certainly easier to let your local game store handle organizing Magic the Gathering events for you, and it's in your local game store's own best interests to do so, but... I just wanted to point out that you can actually find other players looking for a game in your area on your own if you just put in a little effort yourself. Of course, at the end of the day, the real source of all our problems here is obviously the greedy executives at Wizards of the Coast and their parent company, Hasbro. WotC has been limiting supply to local game stores while increasing the amount of product available to big box retailers so they can sell more cards faster through broader sales channels without needing those pesky little local game stores anymore. On top of making it harder for some local game stores to just stock enough cards for popular sets, WotC has also made the Wizards Play Network something of an elitist club that can be burdensome for a store to even qualify for. And lately, Wizards will often provide only an insignificant quantity of promo cards and items to many WPN locations anyway. Remember Magic 30, everyone? WotC also very intentionally doesn't publish an MSRP value for their products, which exacerbates this scalping problem with products like this. But they don't care, because it's good for their own bottom line if there's a frenzy to buy up the latest set no matter the cost. Get ready for that Wonka fever with people searching for that serialized one-of-one, one-ring treatment in the upcoming Lord of the Rings set. Any box that has any potential chance whatsoever to contain that card is already selling for a considerable markup. And these are just pre-orders. These cards don't even drop until months from now. So screw you, Wizards of the Coast and Hasbro, for neglecting the local game stores and stifling the local tabletop gaming communities that made you what you are today, while manufacturing hype over the latest product you are just shoveling out to us through big box retailers. <clears throat> Even though I've already pre-ordered my March of the Machine cards and the Aftermath epilogue cards and just a few of those Lord of the Rings cards. Oh, and the D&D Secret Lair. Still waiting for those Doctor Who cards to come on pre-order, too.